So for the past few years, I've done exclusively digital art, which actually I think has been pretty detrimental for me. I've gotten so rusty. I have all this material, so many paints, pens, brushes, and I don't even remember how to use most of it. I don't even know if I've been using it right this whole time. And the one that's been particularly bothering me lately is my brand new and completely unused set of very expensive gouache paint. I opened it up and never used it. I just let it get all dry. I'm so stupid. I've used watercolor over the years, and gouache paint's like a thicker, more opaque watercolor paint. I don't know, I've never used it. I first cracked them open on stream, actually, so you can go watch the VOD for that if you care. But I'm just gonna show you the process for how I did this first picture, which I'm really proud of, and what I discovered attempting to do this second one. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> So a little disclaimer starting out here, um, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to compare how gouache paint performs compared to normal watercolor. Uh, just because it's been so long, I don't quite remember how to use it. A lot of what I'm doing is kind of just like muscle memory, what I vaguely remember doing. And it, it ended up working out. I remember a bit better than I think I do. But if it sounds like I'm struggling to remember how watercolor works, um, that's why. <laughs> One thing I absolutely do remember about watercolors is how many times I've been told I use it wrong. I know you're supposed to start really light and get darker and darker and darker, but I've never had the patience for that, honestly. I've always started with the darkest colors and worked lighter, letting the other colors, and in this case water, blend and fade the darkest shadows. The only con is sometimes it fades too much and you have to add more shadows to get back that depth, but it's what you would have had to do if you started with lighter colors anyway. Actually, if you're into how to draw anime books, I recommend Shoujo Wonder Manga Art School. Or just check out the author, uh, Ethelian. Ethelian's DeviantArt. The book's full of art tips and Copic marker demonstrations that I've used as illustration for basically any traditional medium I've ever tried, not just Copic. It says I can totally layer dark to light if I want it softer and blended, or light to dark if I want harder shadows. My how to draw manga book says it, and therefore it must be true. The coolest thing about gouache for sure is the fact that you can build up colors in a way that you can't really do with watercolor. The fact that you could put light colors over dark the way you would in acrylic painting is crazy to me. It's a little hard to tell, but here on her chest, the light blue paint mixed with the darker blue paint, rather than one just washing over the other. This painting is something I like doing a lot with this uh, OC in particular. Her name is Malice. I just like drawing her in random outfits I design on the spot. I think I was honestly picturing this costume being black and white though, like leather and lace. Uh, so once I started working on this video, I realized that it would be so much nicer and I could learn so much more if I did the picture in color. So I had to change my plans on the spot. So the color choices here are a little random. It's okay, I probably would have done something else if I had planned it out beforehand, though.
With just water loaded onto your brush, you can kind of pick up and push around the paint that you already have down on the paper. This is cool for like further blending, but it's a bit annoying when it's on accident. So, what's up with the layers of pink and orange under the red shoes? Well, together they make a salmon -y color, a shade of pink to be the highlight for the red, and help skew the red slightly to a red-orange, which is a more complementary color to the blue. Do you have to use complementary colors when coloring things? Nah, it'd look nice though. I was once asked, how do you know where to put shadows? Which is an extremely complex question which involves understanding how light bounces off 3D objects or how certain materials reflect or absorb light. But the easiest answer for that that I can give is to use and study reference images. You never grow out of references, you'll always need them as long as you're an artist. A less complex tip I can give you though is that you should use colder colors for shadows. Blues, purples, you can see that I use brown on the red just to keep it more in the color family. So I did Google the difference between watercolor and gouache paint. It says it's brighter, more vibrant, and more opaque, unless you had water, and resistant to color fading. It also says compared to acrylic paint, it dries flat and non-glossy, which I did notice. Apparently the reason it's so expensive is because all of the pigment in the paint. Apparently that's also what's making it thicker than watercolor. Actually, speaking of pigment and vibrancy, trying out this medium has taught me something about my own process with traditional art. I've always preferred markers, even as a little elementary schooler. I think that preference is because it's the only material that's as bright as I want it to be. Watercolors are pale, color pencils are pale unless you burnish them. That means to rub the color so hard it gets glossy. But gouache paint is so nice. I don't need to come in and reapply color or feel like I need to bust out my color pencils to beef up the values. Here on the sleeves is when I watered down the paint the most, hoping it would overlay on top of the gray I laid down and it like, mostly worked. You, I could see the gray still, I just had to layer more to deepen the shadows.
To talk a little more about this character you've been staring at, Malice is a seamstress for a circus. She can see things that aren't real, and when she takes off her mask, her imagination leaks into reality. So, her being this big weirdo who likes to sew, I just kind of use it as an opportunity to try designing dresses on her. I have a big love for quirky runway fashion, playing with colors and patterns and materials on costume design. I'd like to get to do it more. Would you guys be interested in that kind of thing? More content about my OCs or costume design things? I'm still trying to figure out what kind of content people would be interested in. Oh, this part's cool. I wasn't expecting to have the ability to go back and lighten everything where the apron is to give the illusion of transparency, but it looks so much better than the leaving it the way it was. And there we go! I'm pretty happy with this. Though before we get to any sort of conclusion, we need to talk about the second picture. Alright, we're not going through the whole process with this one. I just wanted to show you what happened with it. I was trying to emulate the style of the Disney artist Lorelei Bouvet, but I just kind of bulldozed ahead without really trying to figure out her process, so I just made a big mess. My first mistake was before I put any paint on the paper. This sketch here. Bad idea. For Lorelei's art, the focus is always on the background, and it doesn't have this giant foreground element of all these specifically drawn characters. This is laid out more like a comic book illustration, and not anything near her style, which is half the problem, really. Especially because I was so married to this sketch, I couldn't fathom painting over it, which is what I needed to do this whole time. Her style is so much simpler, freer, and this sketch was absolutely the wrong way to go. The other thing too was actually a material issue. You see, watercolor and gouache both come in tube and palette form. Palettes are dry and activated with water. Tubes on the other hand are full of wet paint. I don't think this difference has ever really mattered to me with watercolor aside from mess. But with gouache, because the paint isn't watered down at all, you can get much more solid layers. I kept trying to load on more and more paint onto my brush, and it was never completely solid. There was always a little water, so it kept picking up paint off the page rather than laying down more. My dad had to run down to Michael's to help get me the right set I needed for this project, and I didn't even like this method anyway. Now that it was thicker, it was acting like acrylic paint, and I don't like acrylic paint. I took an acrylic painting class in college, and you know, not for me. It's always a huge mess and it takes 500 years to do anything. Though I didn't consider masking tape an option, to be honest. I didn't want to be working on this picture for the rest of my life, I had already fucked up. Not to mention all the paint I was using was much more than this watercolor paper could handle. So I just gave up, but it is an idea worth revisiting. So what do you think? I think gouache paint is a really good alternative for watercolors if you don't like the way they behave and struggle to get good values and colors from them. 
You have way more control over the paint. You can go back and forth in any order. If you don't like something, you can load up the brush with water and lift it right off, or cover on top of it with a different color. But it's not so solid that the colors don't mix. You can lay it on thick, you can water it down, it doesn't fade like watercolors or harden into plastic like acrylics. Honestly, the paint just kind of enabled me to paint however I wanted. My traditional art tends to be mixed media out of necessity. I'm always trying to compensate for weaknesses in my ability or straight up not having the right colors, but I'm more than happy to leave this picture just gouache. It doesn't even need any touch-ups. I didn't really succeed in trying out the style I was going for, but that was via poor planning and not so much an issue with the materials. Make sure you use thick paper for this though. I used watercolor paper for both of these, and the first one took it just fine, and the one where I loaded a fuck ton of paint is when it just died on me. Because I drenched it with paint and water without any sort of prep. I would say it's worth the price, but I don't think a beginner would notice much difference between it and normal watercolor. I'd recommend it most, like I said, for those who tried watercolor and maybe didn't like it, versus someone who's learning how to paint for the first time. I think if you don't know how to control the water with watercolor, gouache would just be confusing to you. So, yeah.